be champions, we gotta play like champions. Cutting down Nats and winning a trophy, that's what it's all about. Two hand slam dunk, Sam Decker. Oh, that was nasty! Driving to the rim, slam dunk! The Wisconsin Badgers are champions of the Big Ten Conference. We're still not satisfied with this. They will return to the Final Four! They proudly have represented the University of Wisconsin. Two step back, Jack, and yes. Decker hits the three! The Wisconsin Badgers have made it to Monday night! They'll play for all of it! They'll play for the national championship! Good evening, everyone. We are coming to you live from Indianapolis for the NCAA National Championship, where Wisconsin fell short 68 to 63. Certainly not the outcome that Badgers fans had hoped for tonight, Jay. Yeah, um, I, part of a lot of people couldn't imagine this would happen. It had all been going so well here the last month on the road to the Final Four, but uh, Duke got Wisconsin at the Kohl Center earlier this year in December, and they got him again tonight. And, and what's interesting is that. Saturday, Wisconsin made all the plays against Kentucky and 171-64. Tonight, at the end, it was Duke making the plays against Wisconsin, and they came up five points short. Yeah, you said this game was very similar, very similar. To, to the, the Kentucky game. game, yeah. And and Saturday night, Wisconsin found the answer to keep all those great freshmen for Kentucky in check. Tonight, the Duke freshmen were able to handle Wisconsin. In fact, Winslow, Okafor, Tyus Jones, and Grayson Allen are four freshmen for Duke. They scored 60 of the 68 points for the Blue Devils tonight. In the second half, the freshmen scored all 37 points. Now, before the game, we thought Wisconsin's experience would be able to, to turn around the game that they lost by 10 against Duke back at uh, the Kohl Center. But Duke's been playing very well the last month, just like Wisconsin has. And you know, it goes back and forth, back and forth. It's a it's a one point game late, but then at the end, Wisconsin made only uh, two of their last nine field goal attempts. And again, similar to Saturday, Kentucky made only two of their last 11 field goal attempts against Wisconsin. So it, it's interesting how it completely flip flopped in the final three minutes from Saturday to tonight, and Wisconsin comes up a little bit short. Right. We uh, I know that there were a lot of lead changes. Mm -hmm often in this game. How many did, yeah. did, well, did the, we have? In, in the first half alone, we had 13 lead changes. Wisconsin had the last their last lead of the game at 58-56 with 425 left. And um, out the rest of the way, Duke outscored Wisconsin 12-5, which again was almost exactly the, the margin that Wisconsin outscored Kentucky in the closing minutes of Saturday night's game. We do have some highlights. Let's take a look at how this game played out. A fantastic national championship game. Badgers looking for their first national title in 74 years. Seesaw battle throughout. Justice Winslow blocks Nigel Hayes. Duke runs. Quinn Cook with a finish at the other end. Blue Devils take a five-point lead. A little later, Nigel Hayes with the answer. He drills the three to give the Badgers a two-point lead. The Badgers start the second half fast. They inbound to Frank Kaminsky. Wisconsin's up 48-39, but Grayson Allen averaged four points a game coming in. He had 16 points for Duke. They take the lead with five minutes and 30 seconds left to play. And the other freshman, Tyus Jones, killed him at the call center. He hits a big three-pointer. Game high, 23 points as Duke goes up one. And Jaleel Okafor, in foul trouble for most of the game. Wisconsin couldn't take advantage. The basket and the foul. Duke wins its fifth national championship, 68-63. We have post-game comments from the Badgers after their defeat in the national championship game. Uh, what a fantastic job these guys did all year. They, um, they just came together and to do all the things that they accomplished. Highest offensive efficiency. Team that committed the least number of fouls during the year. A team that got to the free throw line. Um, so these guys played 30-some games that way, and uh, just unfortunate that this one had to be played out that way. Okay, we'll take questions for the players. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Right over here.
Josh, uh, coach was alluding to it, but uh, you know, obviously you guys didn't get the outcome you wanted, but what does it mean the whole season to get to this point? Question for Josh. It's hard to see it right now, but you know, the relationships we built with each other, you know, that's the stuff that I'm proud about. You know, we had a, we had a heck of a season. Um, the stuff we accomplish. Sometimes, you know, life's not fair. This is what, you know, this is not the outcome we envisioned. You know, we, we knew we were going to win, and it just didn't happen. So, it was a great team, but it just didn't get it done. Right here in front. That's a lot of Cinesport. Josh, along those same lines, what did Duke do to prevent you from getting it done? Josh. Got to the free throw line a lot. Drove into us and just, you know, you saw it. So uh, we just didn't get it done offensively. We fouled too much in the second half. Uh, they were just driving it hard, and, you know, that's what happened. Right here. Robert Littal from Black Sports Online. Um, this is for Frank and Josh. Uh, for the first uh, 30 minutes or so, you guys' offense was clicking pretty well, but then it kind of got bogged down in the last five minutes or so. Was there anything that Duke was doing specifically uh, to cause that, or did you just kind of get out of rhythm a little bit? Frank, we'll start with you. No. Josh? Uh, they're a great defensive team. They've gotten a lot better throughout the year. And... That's what happened. Right here, Michael. Winner from the Indianapolis Star. Uh, Frank, you guys got Okafor in foul trouble, and I'm sure that's something you wanted to do. What, what was the plan with him defensively, and what did you feel like you were able to do to kind of get him in that position? Frank? He's a great player. Um, we knew we had to get him off the court. Um, just tried to do whatever we could to stop him. Um, I was able to take a charge early on. Um, and force him to miss some shots, and he came alive at the end. Right here in the back. Steve Greenberg, Chicago Sun-Times, for, for both you guys. Uh, as seniors, hard as it uh, might have been, did you have a chance to say something to your, your guys, and can you share the essence of, of what it was? Frank? Um, it's tough to say anything right now. Um, these guys are my family, and I mean that literally. I don't mean that hypothetically. Um, I've never been closer to a group of guys in my entire life, um, from the coaching staff on down to every single player on this team. Um, it's just going to be hard to say goodbye. Josh? I'm, I, I agree. Questions, please? Okay, seeing none, we're going to let the guys go. So thank you. Thank you, fellas. All right, questions for, for uh, Coach Ryan, right here in the front. Noah Kozlov, Cinesport. Coach, what was, went into the reasoning of fouling late when you were, when there's still some time left on the shot clock, game clock? What was what? When you, when you committed the foul on Tyus, coming out of the timeout to send him to the free throw line at a, when it was a, a one possession game late, uh, I don't think it was one. Uh, find out what the score was. But Nigel went for a steal. It was 66-63. It was he went for a steal. Not he went for a steal, and then Tyus, who's so quick, kind of drew the foul. Over here, Bob. Uh, Bo Bob Kravitz with the Indi with, I'm sorry, with WTHR in Indianapolis. You guys have gone all year without fouling. Were you surprised or ups particularly upset with the officiating that you guys got called so much? Well, you can't say anything about the officiating. Come on. You're trying to set me up? <laughs> so you want to reword that, or what are, you, what are you saying? Just asking the question. Uh, I, I don't know what the question was. Did you take issue with the officiating? Have you ever watched me during a game? I don't think this was any different. No, if we have these things that we practice, okay? We practice in our practices where if an offensive player jumps into you, we always call it on the offensive player. It's just what we do. So 
you know, there were, there were some situations where obviously our guys felt they were in position. I'm sure they felt they were in the right. So both teams are going to always feel that there's a question or two. So it's just the way the game's played. But I've been with these guys a long time. And, uh, and I've watched a lot of basketball. I, I just, sometimes games are played differently. And you have to go with the flow. Right here. Coach, uh, Kevin Urban back from the Kentucky Colonel. Uh, Coach, what are you going to remember most about these seniors, and what about them uh, represents the University of Wisconsin, the way they played? Oh, everything. Just, yeah. When you go through an experience like this and you get asked the question, it's really hard to put into words the years, the hours, the travel, the... So it'll be in their memory bank, and it'll be in my memory bank, but, you know, it's... It's not something that you easily express. If you've ever played on a team, if you ever were in the service, if you were ever with a company for a long period of time, there's, there's things that happen and things that develop, and it's hard to describe them. It's just an inner feeling that you have. But this group is, was so together and enjoyed each other's company. I think we learned that there are two very difficult positions to be in right now. To be the reporter asking the question and to be the player or the coach answering the question. The, the Badgers are so frustrated and they feel so empty right now, yet their job is to stand in front of the media and take whatever questions come at them. And, you know, you wish you could do it two days from now, but it's only 15 minutes after the game. There's, a, there's technically a 10 minute cooling off period that, uh, but you know, it, it sounded a lot like, remember in Seattle when the Packers lost to the Seahawks after the NFC Championship game in a, in a more shocking fashion than this? You walk into that locker room and you, you don't know what to say. And they don't know what to say. You know, only one team can be happy at the end of the year. And every year ends so suddenly because if you advance, 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 you're thinking, man, this is the year. Well, it's been 74 years since Wisconsin won a championship. They won 36 games this year. Right now, you remember they didn't get the national title, but, but as, as Bo said, there's a lot to be proud of, and just not this night, in a night uh, coming very soon. Well, certainly a lot of shock. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to hear from fans when we come back, and I'm sure they will be. Well, welcome back. Just a few hours ago, this city was filled with Badger Red. In fact, I think it was easily, you know, obvious that we had the most fans here, and they were certainly the loudest in the stadium. So that means that there were a lot of disappointed fans as well. And Danica Lewis uh, caught up with one of them right after the game. And outside of the Lucas Oil Stadium now, a uh, heartbreaker of a loss here. I have a whole family here, and I'll have you guys say your names for me real quick. Hi, I'm Aaron Lovejoy. Aaron, actually, Aaron, talk to me. Those last few seconds, what were you thinking? This was, that's just a major disappointment. I, it's horrible. I mean, to me, I'm, you know, I'm a Badgers fan. They, I'm just mad. Lost for words. <laughs> so close. Everybody played really tough. It was a great game. How is it to beat Kentucky and then lose to Duke? Well, I think that the Badgers' goal was to beat Kentucky. So I think they could have came a little bit more ready for Duke, even though, I mean, Kentucky and Duke are two incredible teams, and it's hard to beat either one of them, so you just got to come ready both games. How are you feeling right now? Disappointed. Disappointed and crushed. But, you know, there's two amazing teams. They, they played well. You hate to see someone lose, and I think the Wisconsin's going to walk away feeling they made a few mental and errors, and and that's going to cost them. An analyst, Aaron, real quick. Did you think? Did you think we had it at any point? Yes, I, I thought we had it. Just they, uh, when Duke was up a bunch and Wisconsin just came back, rebounding threes, all that. I thought we had it right there. I thought we were going to win. Then, yes, they came back and beat us, and that made me really mad. <laughs> Nothing else to say right here. Okay, we'll send it back to you guys. 
All right, thank you, Danica. Disappointed and crushed sums it up very well. Let's go ahead and go to Leah Lynchide, who is live now on State Street, where she has spent uh, the night with thousands of fans. And now I'm wondering uh, if State Street is clearing out now, Leah. Yeah, Michelle, 12,000 fans at the very least all going home disappointed tonight. Now, um, the crowd is clearing slowly. It's still some, some kind of not that sad fans, but largely the crowd is has been clearing. Um, inside the bars, when we saw that devastating loss, a lot of tears, just a lot of tears, a lot of sad faces, a lot of hand, heads in hands, basically. But um, I have to say, us Badgers are pretty resilient farther down on State Street about an hour ago, or just after the game ended, rather, there was quite the dance party for sure. Um, the, plenty of people out there dancing, live music going, a lot of polka dancing. You know, people were people were taking the loss not too terribly. Um, but I will say the majority of fans that we're seeing streaming by here, uh, pretty bummed, pretty bummed about the loss tonight. All right, Leah Lynch had reporting live for us tonight in, on State Street. Leah, thank you. In the meantime, Adam Schraker caught up with Lamar Soup Campbell. He played football for the Badgers in 1994 to 98. He was here tonight among several former Badger players, and uh, here's what he had to say. Thanks, guys. We're here with Soup Campbell. Tell me, I mean, th th this hits home for you? Definitely hits home as someone that uh, a graduate of Wisconsin and very proud. You know, we had a wonderful season. You hate to see it win this way, but... You know, we go through Oregon, we go through North Carolina, we go through Arizona, we go through Kentucky, and of course we all wanted to win a national championship, but we can't be more proud. And to lose to a team like Duke, you know, we still should hang our heads high. There were some calls at the end, I think everyone will question, but as a former competitor, you always playing against the refs as a competitor, so that's really no excuse. And as a Wisconsin fan and Wisconsin, we should still be proud of our team and know that those guys left it all on the floor tonight. We should be proud of them. When you watch this game, I mean, all national championship games right. seem to have these kind of roller coasters. I mean, was right. there a time you thought, we've got this game won? I mean, you know, it's close. We, we always thought that we had the game won. I think what we saw tonight was Duke played a little bit of our game, getting themselves into the bonus and leaving us at a bonus. You look at what we did this year. We always shot free throws well at the end. We always were up by one or two at the end. I think the, hurt, the thing that hurt us the most was not being in the bonus and not being able to get down low and get to the foul. And I think that really was the difference in all the different games and this game tonight. But as a Wisconsin fan, give these guys a hero's welcome home. They're the national championship. They played well. They lost to a great coach, a great team. Tyus Jones from Duke, his veins pump ice, man. When you got a guy like that playing that well, it's hard to win. And, but as a Badger, we're very proud on Wisconsin. And we know we have to keep it going. And Bo will be back. The players will be back. And congrats to Frank and Sam and all the guys. They deserve because they played their hearts out tonight. One last question. What is the legacy of this Wisconsin team that you see? Uh, the legacy is what we saw on television, the camaraderie, what it is to be a student in Madison, what it is to be the play for the University of Wisconsin. And State Street should still be going crazy tonight because these guys gave you a great season. So I expect you guys to still be on State Street, be waiting for these guys at the airport. They gave it all they had. Always be a badger. You know, these guys will always be heroes to Wisconsin to me because of their heart, because of their camaraderie and the love that those guys have for each other and for their university. I think that's that, that, that says something. So thanks, man. Thanks, guys. On oh, Wisconsin, always. We'll, we'll send it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Adam. Some very nice words there from Soup. A lot of people are very disappointed, obviously, but still a lot to be proud of. Well, no question. 36 wins the most in uh, school history and uh, the first championship game since 1941 but this team could look very different next year we assume Bo Ryan will be back again to, to coach his 15th season in Wisconsin but they lose their four seniors Kaminsky Gosser uh, Dukin and Trey Jackson and Sam Decker could very easily decide to go pro so those are five pretty uh, important figures from this team but uh, a young guy named Ethan Happ is a guy to watch for next year and Nigel Hayes should return. Uh, there, there's some talk he could possibly go for, but he probably won't. But, you know, it, they'll still be a very good team. Will it have the magic and the chemistry and the talent that this team will? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. So we are going to take a break and reset, and we'll be right back. News 3, return for the title. Brought to you by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back. We are live in Indianapolis, and if you are just joining us, the Wisconsin Badgers fell short to Duke, 68 to 63. We uh, 
hoped that we would have better news tonight, so we are going to go to meteorologist Karen Swanson, who will, I'm hoping, have a decent forecast for the ride home, Karen. <laughs> well, you know, I shall, we'll send it back to you in Indianapolis tonight, and as you continue our coverage there. All right, thank you, Karen, and we will be right back. Welcome back. We are live from Indianapolis. Certainly a disappointing night, but we are just now starting to hear from players. Yeah, it's remarkable how players can get their phones like within 25 minutes after the game. But uh, Sam Decker tweeted, my apologies to a disappointing end of the year. How about that? But thank you to all of Badger Nation. Very proud to be a part of this. All love. I mean, that just shows some of the class of Sam Decker and the rest of the team, as disappointed as they are, they still uh, recognize the support they receive from their fans all season. Uh, Kevin Lewis has been in the Badger locker room after the 68-63 defeat to Duke tonight, and uh, he came back with some comments from Bronson Koenig and Nigel Hayes of the Badgers. Close game. Uh, we didn't execute down the stretch like we normally do. They did. Uh, yeah. What's it like getting this one? You can pick which foul, which and one, you know, that they called for them. Uh, I, I thought that was a big momentum swing. So, yeah. Just to get this close, what, you know, look on the senior's face and just looking around the locker room, what? I mean, we made, we made it this far, and uh, obviously, <laughs> We didn't reach our goal, our ultimate goal that we set for ourselves a long time ago. So, I mean, it just hurts. Uh, it's, been, it's been wonderful. It'll be a great memory down the road. It's a little uh, bitter and sad right now, but, um, you know, like like all the uh, the grown-ups and adults tell us that when we, uh, when 20 years down the road, when we look back at this, we'll realize, you know, actually how tremendous the season was, what we did for Wisconsin basketball, and, uh, you know, how great of a team we were. I mean, those guys are, you know, very, just as important, you know, responsible for getting us to where we are. Uh, they're a great group of guys. They, they taught us, uh, us being the underclassmen, you know, the, the, the type of basketball that's played here at Wisconsin under Coach Ryan, you know, the toughness it takes, um, what it takes to win, and all the things like that that prepare us to make long runs like this. So I think uh, it was very vital and important for them to uh, teach us the ropes. You know. And there you have it there. But, you know, Jay, something that I think a lot of people will be talking about is the officiating. Yeah, Bo Ryan certainly had some veiled comments, and, you know, he wasn't happy with the officiating. I think that's very clear to say. And it's, uh, college of basketball officiating is an impossible job. And uh, the Badger fans are, are just ripping the officials tonight. Um, it's, it's the losing team always has a problem with the officials. The winning team rarely does. So that's what we'll say. We'll be talking about this much more to come. So thank you for joining us live in Indianapolis, and we will see you back in Madison.